My presentation examines the process of visualization and conducts a test in regard to how the meditations of the media impacts upon various journalistic fields in different countries that issue news reports. In order to analyze this visualization as a news phenomenon, I need to find an event that was interesting for nearly all of the world's media. I therefore decided to choose the Assange case and made an attempt at analyzing the current global hunt that is centered around the founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. As my source, I have used a total of 890 published articles from online media sources covering seven different countries, Sweden, the United Kingdom, Ecuador, Russia, Latvia, Malaysia, and Japan. My conclusion is that stories involving news reports use the process of visualization to quickly explain a current situation where it is almost inexplicable. The Assange case has created just such an explicable report. I found that visualization of news reports had an effect on the journalistic field from one country to another, but it also had an influence on international relations and diplomacy. My study involves an analysis of newspaper articles in various journalistic fields that cover the same event. I try to examine various points, beginning with whether there is the tendency to imitate the effects of visual art and how this visualization is realized in text generally. Julian Assange is the founder and editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks. There is no doubt that this was a scope as far as the global public sphere is concerned. Therefore, reactions to it have so far been rather strong. The United States and its allies consider Assange to be a terrorist. The opposite view is shared by many others, who regard him as freedom fighter and the digital wars, Robin Hood. Various media outlets in different countries illustrate this case in different ways. My investigation has not been a research into the legalities of the matter. It is clear that the complexity of the legal procedures has dramatized the Julian Assange case sharply, transforming a routine investigation in the media world into a scandalous political persecution. One can conclude that Vladimir Putin, Oliver Stone, Michael Moore, Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez and Rafael Carrera welcomed Ecuador's decision to provide Assange with political asylum. But Sweden's Foreign Minister Carl Bildt and a number of leading politicians from the United Kingdom have condemned this. We can conclude that one and the same event has been interpreted in different ways in different countries throughout various journalistic fields. The language and the written text has always been associated with image making. But rarely has this process become involved in the social sciences, in journalistic research. The language and the written text flows across borders and changes itself according to the dominant ideology in each separate country. Ideologies are internally coherent ways of thinking. Organized thought is never innocent. Mass media tends to create the organized thought within their country's borders in synchronization with the local habitus and the social field. This means that the agenda in the public space is often created by counter-hegemonic messages from media industries, including the news. If one of the country's journalistic fields collides with the journalistic field of a foreign country, we can suspect that a cultural conflict is to blame. We cannot separate language from culture. They are intimately connected through meaning. As a system of symbols, language is expressed and perceived both as an audio code and as a visual code. 
Mastering the various modes and codes of communication shows how one becomes part of culture. Like all symbolic forms, language is a resource for social construction and culture. French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu resurrected and reworked the concept of habitus to bring all of the lifestyle factors into one explanatory paradigm based on situated social interaction. Habitus is how we live and is learned through social experience. Media reflect habitus. In order to analyze a variety of newspapers' reports and compare them by visualizing them, we can use various qualitative research methods. My research is based on an analysis of qualitative research of 890 newspaper reports by two methods, a critical analysis of visual communication, Bergström, and the fallacy of a pictorial tone, Mitchell. There are three categories in my analysis model, 10 myths, 8 theses, and five constitutive fallacies about visual culture from Mitchell, seven paradoxes and comparisons from Mirzoyev, conflicts, comparisons, sensibility, perspective and policy, race, the fetish and the gaze, celebrity, and finally, three criteria for good visual communication by Bergstrom, intention, ethics, aesthetics. Swedish media mention the case most frequently and most intensely. From here I analyzed two of the country's qualitative and largest dailies, the liberal Dagens Nyheter and the liberal conservative Svenska Dagbladet. Of the English media I chose The Guardian. After a review of all publications, it became clear that the British media has control over the agenda. I chose to compare Swedish and British newspapers with the media from Ecuador, Russia, Latvia, Malaysia and Japan. All of the online media represent qualitative journalism. I forecasted that the visualization should be strong, and this turned out to be correct. Firstly, we can see that the picture is almost only just black or white and is strongly polarized. Secondly, the media tries to transform coverage of an ordinary trial into a noble battle between good and evil powers, David versus Goliath. First up is Sweden, which predominantly issues a dark picture of Assange. It can be concluded that the Swedish media occupies a defensive position in his rhetoric. We can see a hint of bitterness in reaction to Swedish juridical system, and we can observe a strong and consistently negative image of Assange. The opposite reflection here, Ecuador's El Comercio largely sees the Assange case as purely political process, in which Assange is like a national hero. The same visualization can be found in Russian newspapers, Russian journalists describe Julian Assange is usually highly emotional and thereby builds up a picture of an involved journalist, an IT specialist who is hunted by foreign enemy powers. Media coverage in Latvia is similar to examples seen in neighboring country Russia. A British newspaper shows strongly ironic, emotionally fractious, ill-tempered and little distance description of Assange. Newspaper articles create a picture of the unstable, narcissistic cheat, the clown. Malay publications show a very considerable degree of influence from the British way of informing about the Assange case, but the newspaper's choice of words here are more cautious. The Japan Times examines the Assange case through 125 articles. Most of them have subtitles using phrases such as crime. 
The strongest impression makes Assange visualization as a hero. The hero status undoubtedly comes from his work at WikiLeaks. The stubborn media blindness in the visualization of Julian Assange can be seen better when analyzing the position against the position David versus Goliath. In this can we see how the journalistic field advances various roles for its heroes. In the Russian media, the picture is reversed. Here, the Assange role is acquired to a David, and the Swedish justice system represents Goliath, something to be fought. That is no doubt here that hackers are heroes, with him fighting David battle against Goliath, which is represented as the evil government. And this also points towards the output of the Japan Times. The magazine compares Assange to a data hacker in Latvia. The analysis of all 890 newspaper articles prove that visualization is a widespread phenomenon in today's media values. The visualization uses myths that are rooted in each individual country's habitus. Media uses the visual even when reporting from the trial processes and displays this as a movie, as a film or a video game, one in which the action itself seems fictional. This illusion is caused by the visualization. Thank you for your attention.